Today we are going to get Singapore food from the Singapore restaurant. Oh, I don't my face. Ah! Charlie bit me. <laughs> Kimberly. Kimberly bit me. Okay, bye. Au revoir. Hi, everybody. I'm Steph. I'm Kim. Mm. This is a special edition because we ordered Singapore food for lunch. Yes. This is from Lion City in Mississauga. If you want authentic Singapore food, this is the place to go. Mm. It's a bit of a drive, but Malay and Singapore food, yeah. It's worth it. Today, in front of us, everybody, we have carrot cake. And no, it's not made of nutmeg and carrots. Actually, there's no carrots in carrot cake. I have no idea why it's called carrot cake. It's like white radish. Yes. Made into little thingies and then cooked with like sweet soy sauce, mm -hmm. like a molasses sweet sauce, mm -hmm. egg. And this is sambal, which is a spicy sauce specific to the Southeast region. And this is the black version. There's two versions, a white version and a black version. And this is what they call tauhu goreng. Mm -hmm. Tofu with peanut sauce and bean sprouts and cucumber. Mm -hmm. this it's got is, a little bit of spice to it too, the tofu. Mm. This is uh, ch chicken rice. It's the roast chicken version. Typically, we always have the steam one, which I really love, but they came up with a new one, so I wanted to try. And this one is the Hyannese, right? Singapore's very known for it, but it exists in China too, right? I don't know. Questions that I will never be able to answer. I'm pretty sure. Please do not ask me history about my heritage because I do not know anything. It comes with just like a little broth, very clean broth. Don't know what it's made of, probably chicken. Um, Isn't it just what the chicken's cooked in usually? Probably, I don't know. I don't know such things. <laughs> Sorry. Then there's a curry with some roti. I think people are quite familiar with roti. You dip in it. It's typically eaten um, for breakfast and lunch and dinner and supper. And of course, you just eat it anytime. Okay? Oh, did you want me to get you some sugar, by the way? No, I'm sick. Okay. So they say. The light soy sauce is meant to be poured all over it. Mm -hmm. And then the dark soy sauce, it's very thick. Yeah. And you're meant to... I just put it all over again and then I take the chili sauce. There's usually some kind of garlic in it. Mm -hmm. And then I just pour it all over and just eat it like that. Eat it like that. Yeah. And don't they, in Singapore too, they give you like a ginger so sauce too on the side or something like that as well? Yeah. Um, okay, I need to eat now. Yes. Roasted yeah, chicken with mm. rice. The special thing about chicken rice is usually cooked with pandan. It's a leaf. I feel like we've covered this in a few other things. Pandan is a leaf that gives you a very nice, sweet, fragrant flavor to it. Cooked in chicken broth. The broth that you cook the chicken in. Yep. And the Singapore snacks, I think there was something with panda that we covered in that. <laughs> you happy? Steph, like she mentioned earlier, she really, um, even at home, will cook it every now and then. Mostly her, because I don't eat land meat. But Steph usually does the steamed one. She says she doesn't get the roasted one very often. And actually, I think this is the first place I've seen that offers the roasted version anyway. I think it's new. Yeah. Yeah, they just said they started offering it. Oh my God. You're very excited. I'm so happy. <laughs> so happy. There's cilantro on top, by the way. For those of you that don't like cilantro, go check yourself. Dark soy sauce is like, that's part of what's in here too, the sweetened version though but it's very, it's used very heavily in um, a lot of Singapore dishes. And in case some of you are wondering why I have a spoon in my right hand and a fork in my left hand, that's how we do it in Singapore, okay? Yeah, different Asian countries, not all Asian countries use chopsticks. Quite a few of them use spoons and forks, yeah? Ooh! Yeah! Yeah. The skin is crispy. Mm. Mm, 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 Do you like mm. it a little better than the steamed one? Considering the fact I haven't had this in about 12 years. Maybe. I mean, sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm busy that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I 
our tastes change. So when you're younger, maybe you like the steam one more, and that it's probably the easier one to make. Oh my god! You're very happy, aren't you? Oh my god! I wish you ate meat. Thank you. I love you guys so much. Mm. Okay. So that was a tell us about that. Well, is this generally an? It's like a side dish, right? Mm. Um. I think this is Malay. Malay. Malay origins? Malay with Indonesian influence? Cause Cause even Indian maybe, I don't know. You guys have Tauhu Goreng itself is Malay. The mm -hmm. Tauhu Goreng is Malay. So it should be Malay Indonesian? Yeah, I think so. Because I know Indonesian has a couple, like, gato gato and stuff are very similar in the makeup. It's really good. So their peanut sauce is, I know a lot of people will think of peanut sauce more in like the way Thai peanut sauce is. It's quite different. It has, I actually think it has sambal in it. Might be. I think so. Mm -hmm. Deep fry the tofu. Mm -hmm. And then they put the sauce all over it. Yep. Usually, isn't it supposed to be like, um, it's more like a block of it, right? And then you put the bean sprouts and you layer it more instead of the pieces or how is that? I know when we made it before, that's what we did, but I don't know. Yeah, we kind of put the, the vegetables on top of it and then all this, all the peanut sauce all over it. And mm -hmm. then you just start. Mm -hmm. Shove yeah. it into my mouth. I really like this. It's a very simple dish, mm. but it has a lot of flavor. It's very tasty. I like there's a tiny bit of heat to it. Mm -hmm. Really good. Yeah. I mean, it's really simple. It's quite literally cucumber, bean sprouts, and to fried tofu. Mm -hmm. With the, obviously the sauce, which is, the sauce is the most complex aspect of it, I would say. Did I tell you I love you? <laughs> Oh no, the real. I don't know they put chili yet. They didn't already okay. tasted it. So this is cooked in. Is it? It's a wok, right? But it's like the giant wok. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, there's a black sauce and a white sauce version. Um, can you explain the white one? Because I don't personally. Pictures. Yeah. I think the white one predominantly uses the flavor of shrimp maybe and egg and the preserved turnips yeah it doesn't use it doesn't use the dark sweet soy sauce um at least not to the same amount i don't know if it uses it at all actually it's got to use mm -hmm. some soy sauce mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but and the white one's a little saltier um however i personally like this one better this one look a, looks a little bit different than what you get in singapore just because of the way that they cut the this which is this big chunk right here, this is the radish, which the term for this is, what is it called again? I always forget this word for whatever reason. The radish is what it's called. <laughs> you get it in dim sum too. Why are you having your <laughs> Uh oh, Steph is having a moment. A few moments later. Start, isn't it dal? No. La bang, no. Typo. <laughs> Typo. <laughs> no, Lobak. Is, oh, that's the Cantonese version. Lobako. Lobako. What do you? What did you ask me? What was the question? I asked you what the turnip was called. The turnip cake. Oh, the radish cake. Yeah. Turnip and radish are different things. When but you said Lobak turnip, when you said turnip, I thought you were talking about the salty vegetable. Oh, that's Typo. Oh, sorry. This is Loba. Is Lobako. But it's... Lobako is made out of. Um, turnip cake is made out of daikon. <laughs> I got told. Okay. okay, maybe, I don't know, maybe turnip, radish, daikon interchangeable in Asia. I asked look for at, for yeah, it. turnip cake, alternative names, radish cake. I'm like, well, which is it? Is it a turnip or a radish? Those are very different things. Yeah, lobako, that was what I was trying to think of was the word. Tell you what it's called. But that's Cantonese, yeah. Delicious. It is delicious. So anyways, it's cooked in the wok. They make, it's actually quite quick to cook up you can make it here i i never even though it tastes good when we make it at home it is never as good as buying it i think this is one of those dishes that's always better if someone else prepares it for you but this is probably my favorite singaporean dish this and vegetarian bihun which we can't find here sadly but oh no why'd you make that face I know, vegetarian bihun is delicious. When we're able to travel again and go back to Singapore, we'll definitely do like a, a hawker center, like 
blog and stuff, that would be really cool. Lion City, <clears throat> would you venture into doing vegetarian bihun? That's so many different ingredients. I feel bad for them. <laughs> also, I know you took chikwe off your menu. Oh. Picture. Could you bring it back? So what I'm putting on here is we talked about it earlier is sambal. Um, I personally like it spicy. Actually in Singapore, generally they include some sambal in it, but this one's mild here. They don't usually add it, which is probably just maybe a North American preference, but I, think, I like it spicy. I think they might have misunderstood when I said, could you put sambal on the side? Oh, instead of making it in Because I, 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 I wanted them to give me additional sambal. Got you. Did you tell them no shrimp? Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. It generally has shrimp on it. Um, I do eat seafood, but shrimp is my least favorite. It's so. very good. She calls the shrimp the cockroaches of the sea. Yeah. Roti prata. Mm. This is a, in Toronto, when you're drunk or you want to go out for late night food, you have pho. In Singapore, we go for roti prata. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're open really late after you're drinking after your party people go have it this is also a breakfast food i know i know just because it's curry doesn't mean it's not breakfast food we are strange people we eat everything for breakfast like noodles and rice and porridge and congee and curry and fish and dim sum not savory stuff yes so <clears throat> simple as that i'm just going to use my hands for the sake of it a little cold so and this is this is very this is the indian is it malay indian derived or is it actual i think it started west with indians? indian west indians i don't know just or east indian indian and then you dip it and then you eat it as a kid you put uh ca castor castor sugar white sugar mm -hmm. i mean when you say as a kid if we have it at home we still do that too <laughs> yeah you would take it and dip it in um sugar it's really good, actually. That curry looks pretty good. It looks like it's the really good. Like, yeah. um, uh, they do fish curry, uh, chicken curry, mutton curry. Mm -hmm. This is chicken, I believe. Probably. Yeah, we. Um, that is actually probably the thing that we can make at home that tastes as close to what we get in Singapore. Mm. The curry. All in all. 10 points, 10 points, 10 points, 10 points, 10 points, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I mean, I haven't eaten that, so I can't attest to it, but <clears throat> everything else I've had. She takes care of me. You satiated? <laughs> She's very happy. Are you very full? No. Are you sure? Yeah. You didn't eat too much? Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did. I already feel full uh, too. Um, we had a dessert. Should we inter insert the footage now? Oh, is that what we're doing? We're just eating ice kachang in the car. Is that what we're doing? Can I have some, please? Of course. Oh, I'm very free. Mm -hmm. Ice kachang is shaved ice mm -hmm. with sweet syrup of different flavors. Rose being one, and then what are the other flavors? Then they also put carnation milk on it. Mm. Um, it's a bit like the Hawaiian one. Is it Hawaiian or Filipino? Which one was it? You like Filipino does the um, yeah. Um, Thai do one too. Thailand does this. Mm, and then they've put like a grass jelly in the bottom, which is this thing. This is like grass jelly. Mm -hmm. I touched it. They have all the other kinds of jelly as well. Uh, they have red bean in the bottom. 
um, in Singapore they put a tapchi. <gasps> there okay. it is. Yeah. There's one. Can you buy half in case you only have one? Can I have a little bit too, please and thank you? You don't want the whole thing? No, you buy half so that I can have half. Don't put the whole thing in your mouth. <gasps> you dropped it. Yeah. Give it back. In Singapore, you only get like two, maybe. Here, they only give you one. <gasps> two! They give ah! Whoa! Holy, they give you so Whoa! many. A tap cheese. Mm. <laughs> it's just the the nostalgia of yeah. when you're a kid and you have a bowl of ice kacang and then you find it and you're just like it's gold. My brother and I used to fight for it. What is why is um rose syrup so common in um Singaporean dessert? Do you know? I don't know why I asked you like you would know. <laughs> Never mind. There's no way she knows. <laughs> so bandung is a Indonesian drink. It's popular in Malaysia, picture. Singapore. I'm gonna put it in the middle of this picture. <laughs> um, popular in Asia. Half can of ice cream soda. Sure. Two cups of ice, three fourths cup evaporated milk, and a fourth cup of rose syrup. That's how I make it. Not rose water, rose syrup. You know the funny thing is actually drinking this does taste very similar <laughs> to bandung. Take a sip. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. It does. It's just much more. It's been tainted it. by the the red beans. It's good though. It's very good. Ah! So we had the ice kachang, which was delicious, and it's probably my definitely probably my all-time favorite dessert however this one and what's the other one called the one that has like the Yellow potato one? and stuff oh that's in the liquid i forget this um called. Bo -bo 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 -cha -cha. Bo -bo -cha -cha. Yeah, yeah yeah probably ranking ice kachang is number one Dao fa is number two this which is how do you call it again Pulu Itam. Pulo Itam, and then Bobo Cha Cha, and then the, finally the Mongolian one, Dao Swan. Oh, a couple of those are, those are, quite a few of those are Malay treats though, aren't they? They're all Malay. Actually, I don't know. No, Dao Fu Fa This is one's it? Malay just because the name is Pulo Itam. Dao Fu Fa, which is Dao Hua, is Chinese. Yeah. Um, ice Kacang is <laughs> everyone's. A lot of it's very popular in different varieties across um, Southeast Asia. Yeah, that was one sounds like it's Chinese. Mm. And then this is coconut. So, glutinous rice. Black glutinous rice. Yes, black glutinous rice, and it's cooked with like rock sugar and what else is cooked in it? Who knows? Ginger, ginger, rock sugar, and it's made into like it's almost a rice pudding in ways, which is common in a lot of North American cuisines and Spanish and stuff. It's this one is a heavier, very warm dessert though. Yeah, it's it's a hot dessert. So yeah. Oh, right it now it's dessert. not because it's been there for a while but it's it's still warm though, but it's not yeah, it's not hot. So you can tell it's it's quite thick and um it's very tasty though. Can I mix it? Oh this makes it all up. It's not usually this sticky but it's been here for a while. It's cooled a little bit. That's yeah. why it's a little thicker. <laughs> it has texture to it due to being rice. So it's still, you can, some of it's mushed, but you can still taste the individual grains of the rice. Mm. And because of this type of rice, this type of rice has a slight like nutty tech, uh, flavor to it. So it's very, I don't know how to describe it beyond warmth and comforting when it comes to that even though it, like visually looking at it you would think it's quite mushy it has a bite to it mm. um this and is the, really good it's very good and it's it is sweet but i wouldn't say it's overly sweet mm. and then the coconut milk just also rounds it out at the end which is it's commonly served with it but i mean i'm sure people leave it off if you don't like coconut milk but i personally like the creamy um flavor that the coconut milk adds I was so full, I'm not anymore. Mm -hmm. You've done it again, Lion City. Mm -hmm. 
but I lied. <clears throat> what? I'm really full. I think I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to say something. In Singapore, the dishes that you saw are relatively cheap. <laughs> yeah, they're very common ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. You could get a plate of chicken rice for <laughs> three fifty. 450, 550, depending on where you go. Mm -hmm. You could get a plate of carrot cake for the same prices. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this one would probably be like four dollars. Yeah, ice kacang is also like cheaper than that. Yeah. It's really just ice. Anything that has more of those like fresh vegetables are generally a little bit more expensive. Food in Singapore is generally very cost effective to get. Yeah. Hawker centers are great places to just go and have a quick meal. <clears throat> prices are so cheap. Um, here, I would just say, it doesn't matter. Because no. you're the only one that gets this to me. So yeah. I will give you my life. Yeah, the big thing about Singapore is they're far more focused on like volume, like hawker centers and everything like that. It's volume. Some of the things are a little more complex in like building the flavors, so it takes time to build them. And they rely more on spices and stuff to flavor it. It's really about the flavor and the preparation, which is why it's <clears> slightly <throat> cheaper for obvious reasons. And I, I'm sure there's some kind of reasoning in reference to Singapore and why their food tries to maintain a very cheap cost. Hawker centers are outdoor, open air um, food courts, let's put it that way. Food mm. courts are the closest thing you look at it, but in Singapore, food courts have air conditioning um, most of the time. Mm. Unless they're under a flat and it's open air, then it's not <laughs> too cold for Hawker centers are just big, space, open air, open air <clears throat> areas with many, many different stalls selling different stuff all around. There's other dishes that are that we mentioned. I mentioned vegetarian bihun. That's also a common one. Um, it is a little more complex than um, some of the dishes we have because it has all these different. Um, like seitan and tofu and different bridles made into it. We can insert a picture, but that's my favorite Singapore dish. Um, you quite like it too. And the reason I'm doing this is because I remember what I was going to say. I was going to say oh. that Singaporean dishes, while they look really simple, some of them have many, many, many steps. And the yes. elements that go into the dishes are very separate. So for example, for example, just the carrot cake. You might see it's radish with egg with turnip and shrimp, but mm -hmm. then the, there's the sauces, but the sambal chili that you put into it takes all kinds of different ingredients and it takes time to mix. So like mm -hmm. it's not it's not as easy for us to say, oh, you know, we'll, we're in Canada, so we can just simply cook it. It takes a long time to cook mm -hmm. some of these very cheap dishes that you normally find in Singapore. Yeah. Um, we had a housewarming party mm -hmm. and we did a complete Singaporean theme. We cooked the whole day. And for, half of the day leading up to it too, a whole bunch of prep too. Yeah, for six dishes, six Singaporean dishes maybe. Yeah, and one of them was just DIY. A DIY. You put it together, which is another dish called yeah. popia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Anyways. Yeah. But I mean, I think a good example of that is your chicken rice, right? Like, in simplistic terms, it's rice and it's chicken. Yours was roasted. Though it seems very simple. However, the way the rice is cooked, also it comes with those different sides of the one that is the one that has to be homemade is the chili sauce. And almost every single stall makes their own chili sauce too. So it's just showing that the it's really thought out every dish and it has it has complexity to it even though it might in theory sound rather simple. Which is why I said like the spices and the flavor and stuff is really what makes the Singaporean dishes very special. To all you foodies in Toronto, yeah, I'm talking to you people that you know who I'm talking about. I would like for you guys to go in depth into the food culture of Singapore mm. because I think the foods are so complex mm. and interesting. Yeah. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us on our lunch. If our you, little mukbang. <laughs> mm. If you like our videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Yes, please. And suggest other things. This was a little impromptu because we had a craving and then we thought we would share it with you because it's a little more unique than you probably see. Um, but yeah, if you have suggestions of stuff you want us to check out, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Be intentional for food. <laughs> I still don't know what that means. It doesn't matter. <laughs>
Tell me what to do.